It is the Apostle Paul that says in Romans chapter 11, verse 11, that it's through Israel's fall. Romans 11, verse 25, Paul says through Israel's blindness has, has happened to Israel. Now, Gentiles don't need to go through Israel to be saved. In the prophets and in the law, Israel would be saved. Then they would take God's salvation to the nations. That's not the message for today. Today, in the dispensation of grace, Gentiles are saved through Israel's fall without going through Israel. But here, God had to send an Israelite to this Cornelius, this, this Gentile. So look at chapter 10, verse 44. As Peter speaks, it says, while Peter yet spake. Now, what, what's happening? Peter is witnessing to Cornelius and to Cornelius' home, his, his whole household. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter. Now before we see what Peter says, my friend, I want you to see that as Peter is speaking to these Gentiles about Jesus Christ, he's speaking to them, explaining his Messiahship. Same thing he explained to the Jews. The Holy Ghost came down and the evidence of it in that day was that they spake with new tongues. Now remember in Acts 2, Peter says you had to be water baptized first, then shall you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But here these Gentiles received the gift of the Holy Ghost and they hadn't yet been water baptized. Now, you have to admit, my friend, from these verses that something changed. Before you had to be water baptized, then you received the Holy Ghost. Here they heard the word, they received the Holy Ghost, and what we're going to see is then later Peter baptized them. Look at it. Verse 47, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? You see, Peter says, let's get them in the water. We Jews can't keep them from being water baptized because we see the Holy Ghost and already fell on them. Now, my friend, why the change? Well, let me explain to you why in Acts 2, the Holy Ghost came after water baptism, and in Acts, by Acts 10, it came before. Because, my friend, in Acts chapter 9, something happened. You read Acts chapter 9, God changed the program. He raised up the Apostle Paul. His name was Saul of Tarsus. And he brought in a new dispensation where the Holy Ghost is given not by word of baptism, but by faith in Christ. And when these Gentiles believed the message that they were to believe through Peter's mouth about Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, guess what? They got the Holy Ghost before they were ever water baptized. See, that ought to free some people up. If you're out there and you think water baptism is a part of salvation, you need to see here's some people who were saved before they were yet water baptized. Okay? Now, what about today? You know, denominations, they fight over, is water baptism an outward sign of inward faith, or is it really for salvation? And see, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. They confuse it. Well, do you immerse somebody? Do you, do, do you have to pour it on them? Do you sprinkle them? Well, you know, my friend, I had a discussion with someone. They said, well, we've got to be totally immersed. Some people say you've got to dip them forward. Others, you've got to dip them backwards. And all this confusion about something that has nothing to do with today. You know, if you want to know how to water baptize in Israel, it was a sprinkling. They were sprinkled. Ezekiel chapter 36, God tells Israel, I will sprinkle you with clean water and forgive your sins. See, that sprinkling was like when that priest back there sprinkled the blood to cleanse you. Well, that water baptism was a sprinkling. John had what they call a reed, and he'd dip it in the water, and he just like that. So people are fighting over whether the water baptized, whether it's an outward sign or inward faith and how to do it, and they don't need to. Let me show you about today. Go with me, if you will, to Ephesians chapter 4. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. See, there's only one baptism for today. You know, if somebody asked me, say, well, Ron, do you believe that in order to be saved, you have to be baptized? I'd say absolutely. But if they asked me, Ron, in order to be saved today, do you have to be water baptized? I'd say absolutely not. See, remember I said there's more than one baptism? Well, there is a baptism for the body of Christ, someone who has trusted Christ. Paul says it. Ephesians 4, look at verse 5. Paul says that in verse 5, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. 
So since the Apostle Paul tells us there's one baptism for today, he needs to be the one who tells us which one it is, isn't it? Right? I just told you there's no water baptism. Go back to 1 Corinthians, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The Apostle Paul, he had to learn this as well. As the book of Acts shows the fall of Israel and salvation going to the Gentiles, it is a, it is a transitional book from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to the book of Romans. It explains the acts or the actions of the apostles. The apostle Paul, as God shifted from Israel's program and as that program diminished and water baptism left the scene, Paul learned that. In, that, in, in 1 Corinthians 1, look at uh, verse 13. Paul to the colonel, our colonel brother in the Corinthians, he says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? See, early in Paul's ministry, he wore to baptize because that was, the, that was the outward sign in that day, during the transition period, of someone who believed. You see, even Peter still wore to baptize Cornelius, didn't he? He didn't have to, but he did. God allowed a transition period. But watch, keep reading, see what the apostle says. 